to Positively Joyous. And today I just wanted to talk about how the higher self or the Holy Spirit may actually come through to you. Because people often ask me, you know, how do you get in contact with your higher self or your Holy Spirit? And they're there all the time. They're talking to you all the time. It's just sometimes we have to um, listen. We have to hear. But also you have to have your mindset in a different place as such. And know that sometimes it will be given to you through metaphor. So for example, here's how mine first presented. I was doing my Reiki attunement, whew, must be about 10 years ago now. And as I was meditating and being attuned by the teacher, I had this amazing image of this beautiful rosy cheeked woman and I got the name Mahatma. Now that made me a little bit uneasy because I thought I'd only ever heard the name with Mahatma Gandhi, who's obviously a gentleman. So that kind of threw me a little bit. Um, but her name was Mahatma. She was, as I say, beautiful, busty, rosy-cheeked um, woman. But she was a figurehead, a, a ship's figurehead. You know, the figureheads that come at the front of the ship, they guide the ship, they're a, a lucky mascot, they keep the boat safe. Um, and so I didn't realise this at the time, but years later when I was thinking about that image, oh wow, that's so amazing, isn't it? Because here she is, she's saying, you know, she's a strong, powerful woman like I am, that she's there looking out for me, ahead of me, keeping me safe, guiding me to where we should be going, guiding the ship, if you like. And that was fantastic in itself. But years later, when I was reading a book um, by, I think it um, was the author of the Celestine Prophecy, his name escapes me at the moment. Um, and he was talking about, in Buddhism, they have the, um, the analogy of Mahatma, but it's spelt with a Y, Mahatmya, if you like, um, being the larger self, the bigger self, the divine being within you. Now, I didn't read that book till about seven years later or so, and, and when I put them to give Mahatma, oh, that's where the name comes from, showing me it was my higher self, the divine me, however you want to call it. And I had no knowledge of that name at that point. So in some ways, years later, the proof came that actually I didn't just kind of make it up, you know, I want a spiritual name like Mahatma Gandhi or anything like that, that actually I was in contact with that divine self and it had given me its name even though I didn't understand it at the time. So I thought that was amazing. So that was my experience through meditation as such. And then years later, I was reading a book by um, Anthony Peake called The Daemon. And the daemon is the word that the Greeks used for the higher self, if you like, or the other self within you. And he um, was talking about the... Um, so the Greeks called it, sorry, the Eidolon or the daemon. So the Eidolon would be our ego, if you like, and the daemon is the right side, creative, spiritual, higher self, Holy Spirit. And as I, as I was reading that book, I was, I was, oh, I really wish I could contact my higher self. I really wish I could hear that clearly, because it was giving lots of examples of people through history had listened to that voice and done amazing things, Joan of Arc, people like that. Uh, anyway, so I went to bed and that was it. And then I got up in the morning having asked for this. And then I was on the computer and I was typing up some students' homework and collating it into one sheet. And I clearly heard this voice as if somebody was standing next to me say, the computer's going to close down and you haven't saved that work. And even though it was so clear, I kind of went in my head, oh, I'll just finish this bit, then I'll save it. Bang! Computer shut down for no reason whatsoever. And I laughed out loud. I, it just made me laugh so much because I thought, oh my God, if I can miss that, what else have I missed going along? It was as if somebody stood there, spoke directly into my ear and told me exactly what was going to happen in the future, trying to save me from problems and I still ignored it having asked for it as well, having asked for that direct contact. 
So just watch what's going on in your life. Listen to that voice. So I'm a therapist and so often in my therapy, I'm hearing things and in the teaching, it's, it's being given to me. It's coming through me all of the time. Now I just trust it. Now I don't see it as anything apart from me. I used to think I was channeling, um, but actually it's just, it's there all the time. It's just me, the higher, wiser, if you like, more expansive version of me. That's in you too. That's there all the time. And so if you cultivate time and space to listen to that voice, not only will it prove to you in some ways that you know, you're not making it up and you're not crazy, but actually it will then start to help you so much. And I'll just tell you this, how I, how I, I learned to trust it. Because in my early days when I was just starting out, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and life coach. And I had somebody here and I was stuck. I just thought, I've got nothing else. I have no idea where to go from this. And I heard, again, right in this ear, clear as anything, this crazy thing. And I thought, oh God, I can't say that. And I had nothing else. So I thought, well, I've got nothing else. So I said, I don't know why I want to ask you this, but I just want to ask you this. Oh my God, it turned the session around. She went, oh, actually, blah, 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 blah. And I learned in that moment, because I am good at learning, I learned in that moment always to trust that voice because it had given me something very, very, very valuable in that moment and it always has done ever since. So please, please take some time, even if you don't formally meditate, just take some time to breathe, to center, to listen. And when you catch that voice, Listen to it. Stop for a moment. Say, what was that? Where did that come from? Is this information that I didn't have before? Is this something that could change what I was going to habitually do? Because there's the key, isn't it? There's the, um, the nub of it, you know, that you've got to listen and, and maybe do something that you wouldn't have done before. Otherwise, you're always going to get the same. So I hope that's been helpful. If you um, enjoyed this, please comment, like, subscribe and share. Uh, you know, as you give that gift to everybody else, that gift will come back to you. And for more information on my therapies, classes, courses, retreats, please visit www.positivelyjoyous.com and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.